as we get down to the final minutes for the launch of GOES T on board an Atlas V rocket from right here at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Yeah, Daryl, we heard the team, uh, they secured uh, the Atlas uh, tanks to flight pressures, uh, secured that topping, so we see that the liquid oxygen on board that first stage is uh, secure and ready to go. We should be hearing them uh, at about a minute 50, securing the Centaur uh, tanks and getting uh, that tank up to flight pressures, getting ready for launch. Spacecraft is on internal, getting ready to listen to the vehicle. 155. Launch sequencer start. 150. Securing Centaur LH2. Securing Centaur LO2. So there we hear Daryl vehicles on internal. The auto sequencer has taken over and started the count. And launch Centaur LH2 and LOX uh, sequences are done. Launch has been enabled by the launch conductor. FCS armed. The flight termination system has been armed. And the team is continuing to finalize all preps as the vehicle is getting ready for liftoff. 120. With the U-Tarm. count started. 115. Reduce ECS for launch. Roger. 110. Vent valves locked. And there we hear the vent valves locked, securing everything to secure that boil off. We should now be coming up on the last call for the range. One minute. Rock, report range status. Range green. And there we have a green range, Daryl, so everything looks good this morning. Last but not least, we will bring everything to flight pressures and then hear that last status check from Dylan Rice. And that'll be an exciting moment indeed as we look across the river there to a shot of the rocket. Just a few seconds, seconds left. Stable at step three. And there we verified that all uh, pressures are, are uh, good, and we are stable at step three, ready for liftoff this morning. 28. Verify ECS reduced for launch. Verify. 25. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go goes T. And here we go. The final seconds now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And liftoff, liftoff of NOAA's Ghost T, our newest weather sentinel in the sky to help keep us safe here on the ground. Hey, Daryl, let's listen in as we listen to United Launch Alliance, Rob Kirsten, look good. who's the flight mission commentator. View has gone to close loop control. RD-180 is now throttling down as expected. Engine response looks good. We are now 33 seconds into flight. Atlas is 3 miles in altitude, 0.9 miles downrange distance. Max Q, 48 seconds. We have passed through Mach 1. Vehicle is now passing through Max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. We throttle back those RD-180. Now 55 seconds. Flight. Atlas is seven miles in altitude, four miles downrange distance, traveling at 1,900 miles per hour. RD-180 is now throttling back up. We backed off the throttle to reduce the stress of the rocket. Now flight, Atlas is 13 miles in altitude, 10 miles downrange distance, traveling at 2,700 miles per hour. Come now at 90 seconds, seconds into flight, ULA's Atlas V rocket weighs now just one half of what it did at launch, burning propellant at a rate of more than 2,600 pounds per second. In 10 seconds, those solid rocket motors on the side will cut off. Beautiful shot from space. SRBs have burned out as expected, and we see a good SRB jettison. Clear shot of those vehicles now executing closed loop steering. Here in a few seconds, they're going to throttle vehicle, back up. Vehicle performance looks good at this time. Now 135 seconds into flight.
The RD180 has throttled down slightly. Vehicle performance continues to look good at this time. Tank pressures are stable and Atlas booster battery voltages remain in their expected ranges. Now the upper stage is preparing for its use. Centaur reaction control system is now pressurizing the flight levels. Now that will jettison the payload fairing, which uh, protects GOES T at 3 minutes and 30 seconds. We have just over one minute until BECO. We're now seeing uh, the RD-180 throttle limiting to maintain a 2.5G acceleration limit. Standing by for payload fairing jettison. And we've seen a successful payload fairing jettison. Good shot of those fairings. RD-180 is throttled back up now. And the vehicle has reached a 4.6G 4 4 acceleration limit and will maintain this level through BECO. And you're looking at animation now. We've seen that the Centaur has begun its boost phase chill down sequence. Booster about to cut off. And Beco, booster engine cut off. Standing by for stage separation and a successful stage separation event. We've seen pre-start on the RL-10. And MESS-1, we have ignition for the first burn. This first burn of ULA's Centaur upper stage will place the GOES-T spacecraft into a parking orbit around the Earth. This burn will last just over seven minutes. What a shot there, huh, Mick? Yeah, that was great, Daryl, to see all that and listen to Rob Kesselman call that flight. Uh, the uh, first stage uh, performed very well this mo this afternoon, and everything's looking good. Those gyms. Activity on the reaction control system as it begins its periodic firings to maintain thermal control conditioning. Yeah, those Gem 63s performed well, solid rocket boosters, and RD-180 performance well. What I really liked was when we saw the payload fairing come off. That was a great shot from the camera. Saw the payload fairing come off, and then most people probably noticed that little uh, half cylindrical come off after half payload ring. fairings. Yeah. That was what we call the Centaur forward load reaction deck. Uh, because the fairing, the 5-meter fairing, encompasses both Centaur as expected. and the GOES t satellite, there's a a load ring that's inside the fairing around Centaur to help keep that 5-meter fairing from flexing. So that's what you saw when you came off there. I was wondering about and that. And the engine response remains nominal. I just and so word from the trajectory and performance group that booster performance was as expected for the booster phase of flight. All right, we're going to keep an eye on this burn and 